Emotional intelligence is very important in everyday behavior. There is a study, there are so many studies, I am just quoting uh, one of those, a very comprehensive study and uh, thoroughly designed. It looked at college students and took the ability test of uh, emotional intelligence and uh, uh, they also looked at the big five personality trait. Uh, they wanted to understand whether emotional intelligence is affected by the personality type or not. Uh, so, big five personality type, many of you might remember that big five personality types are related to extroversion means our uh, tendency to express our behavior externally whenever I am facing some issue. Introversion means my tendency to going back within myself whenever I need energy. Uh, conscientiousness meaning following the process, openness to experience that means being experiment about life, about situations uh, and neurotism means emotional instability. These are the five personality traits, this is called big five. The big five was assessed, emotional intelligence was assessed and then they were also asked to provide the life scale, life space scale information that looks at the self care behavior, leisure pursuit, academic activities and interpersonal relations. What in this study was found that women invariably uh, they, they, they scored significantly higher than men on the emotional intelligence. However, emotional intelligence was a stronger predictor of the life space criteria for men. For men, if they become emotionally intelligent, that has much more impact on their uh, life space scale related variables. And what happens when someone is suffering from low emotional intelligence or comparatively lower emotional intelligence? Principally, that is connect that is related to the inability to perceive emotions and to use emotion to facilitate thoughts and that was also associated with the negative outcome. And what are the negative outcomes of lower emotional intelligence? In that this study among the college student, illegal drug and alcohol use, deviant behavior, poor relations with friend, all these variables were connected to low emotional intelligence. Finding remained significant even after statistically controlling for scores on big five and academic achievement. So, that means, personality type or academic achievements are not connected to emotional intelligence. In other words, you need to do not worry whatever is your personality type, you need not to worry whether your academic achievement is high or not high in comparison to your colleagues. Still, you can have emotional intelligence and still it will pay off, still it will be one of the most important criteria to be successful in career. And in many situation it is more important than cognitive skills, it is more important in many situation uh, in comparison to academic achievement. Let us look at what Yog says about it. So, uh, you recall our discussion on how mind works and that is what we discuss according to the yogic perspective. There are vrittis, there are mind modifications and there are klishta vrittis and aklishta vrittis. Klishta vrittis which are uh, which causes suffering, which, uh, which cause bond, uh, bondage and aklishta vritti which are unhindered not causing suffering. Uh, mind modifications can be are because of right knowledge, it can be because of viparya, which is avidya, asmita, rag, dvesh, abhinivesh, it can be because of imagination, sleep or memory. So, mind modifications can be clished or aklished, depending on that we have a kind of chitta bhumi, the quality of mind we attain that can be chipta, which is very fluctuating, vikshipta, generally fluctuating, ekagra is focused, 
Nirudh means well controlled, completely in control. So, uh, that is how the mind works. If we look at emotions from the Indic perspective, we see a very universal classification of emotions and that is very useful to label the emotion and recognize that emotion. You remember the ruler, the recognition to uh, labeling, these are the three important steps in, uh, in the rural model of emotional intelligence. If we keep 9 or 10 or 8 rasas in our mind, we can very easily label and classify the emotions, what we are experiencing ourselves, what others are experiencing. So, Bharat Muni is Natya Shastra, which was written about 2000 years ago. It gives excellent classification of the different emotions, this is called rasas. Rasas are the dormant emotions. These are Shrangar, which is related to love and attractiveness, Hasya, which is related to laughter or comedy or mirth, Rodram, which is related to anger or fury, uh, Karunya, which is related to uh, compassion and mercy, uh, Bibhats, which is meaning disgust and aversion, um, Bhayanakam, which is related to horror and terror, uh, Viram or Viras, that is related to heroic mood, valor, courage, um, Adbhut Ras, which is about the wonderment and amazement. These eight Rasas were identified by uh, Bharat Muni in the Natya Shastra. Then there was a conceptual problem. The conceptual problem, which was recognized and then addressed uh, by Abhinav Gupta in 8th or 9th century was that during the play, because Natya Shastra was about the drama and how uh, uh, people enjoy the drama. And in that connection, the conceptual problem was that how come people enjoy seemingly contradictory rasas. So, Shrangar is a one type of rasa which has a very deep pleasantness in it and uh, Vibhats, it is a bhayanak ras. In the same play, uh, rasik or the observers can enjoy both the rasas. How come that is possible? Because if I am in Shrangar, how I can move from Shrangar to Vibhats ras? And that is related to our personal life as well. Same people can experience one rasa at times and another rasa another time. What is that capability which makes people swiftly move from one rasa to another as it is appropriate according to a situation? There must be something else, there must be some backdrop under which this shifting of rasas, shifting of mood from one kind of rasa to another kind of rasa is happening. And that concept was added by uh, Abhinav Gupta, he gave the notion of Shantaras. So, Shantaras is like a substratum in which people experience fluctuation and that fluctuation can be in the form of Shangaras or Hasiras and Rodaras but people then come back to that substratum and that also is enjoyable, that is also a rasa, that is shantaras, tranquility. So, Indian perspective and yogic perspective of emotional intelligence is or emotional balance is that it is not about having only sweet emotions. We discussed in the second wave of positive psychology as well, there is a recognition and that is kind of very long recognized in the Indian tradition that there are no uh, emotions which are only negative or only positive. Negative emotions sometimes result into personal growth and positive emotions they may sometime tilt it toward hedonism of which in the long run we may have negative outcome. So, there are no watertight strict negative emotions or positive emotions. What is important is to have appropriate emotion at appropriate time and our ability to come back to samatva 
our ability to regain the equanimity, when that is that capability is there, we call the person sthiti pragya, that is a very highest state, but we that that in the normal life, in the day to day, day, day life, we call that sthiti called samatva, equanimity or emotional balance, that is required in the day to day life. And our ability to experience different rasas and coming back to shantaras is the essence of emotional balance as per in the uh, Indian perspective.